whatever you say from this point forward is being recorded. And at one point or the other, it'll probably show up on the internet. All right, so that's the, the little, that's the sales pitch. Um, today I'm gonna go through first Apple products kind of quickly because I talked about that and I wanted, I, I feel we all talk about software so much when we're teaching these classes. We need to clear up and make sure everybody knows what the different hardware choices out there, because we all know the Apple stores, are, they're a victim of their own success. They're way too busy to spend the time that you need. Um, you can always go to the Best Buy store in Arden Fair. They have an Apple employee that works there. Steve is actually not going to be there much longer. I don't know who's going to replace him. He's moving on to another position in Apple, so which has a little bit better upward mobility. So, um, this so I don't lose my battery. All right. So, start recording. I already did it. So the recording is going. Try to remind me at the end of the keynote, I want to stop the recording and restart it in case the keynote doesn't get recorded because I can always post this keynote presentation separately. This was done on my Mac. I did it fairly quickly last evening. I could also build it on my iPad and I could present from my iPad. So first thing is if you buy an app, a Mac product, I'm going to differentiate. Today I'm going to talk about all Apple products and a little bit about Mac. But when I say Mac, there's certain things that are just Macintosh only. If you buy a Mac from Apple, either online, in the online refurbished store, or in the Apple store, you can buy from Apple for $99 a year what's called one-to-one. -one. How many here have used one-to-one? -one? How many of you bought it and thought you were going to use it? <laughs> but it's good. It's great. So if, think about that. That's like two hours of my time, but you can go into Apple. If you bought an Apple product from Apple, you have to buy it when you buy the computer. Okay? You can't buy it later. And unfortunately, if you buy it at Best Buy or Amazon or somewhere else, they can't do it. Apple used to let you buy one-to-one -one no matter what, but the problem was they were selling too many. They couldn't, they couldn't get enough instructors to help, so they said, well, we've got to limit it somehow. So we're going to limit it to only if you buy from Apple, even if you buy a refurbished from Apple. A hundred bucks for a year, and you can go in once a week for an hour. You, one-to-one, -one, hence the name, one-to-one, -one, with an Apple genius. They'll sit and talk with you. They have specialists in different things, whether you want to do uh, iMovie, iPhoto, address book, whatever. Raise your hand if you have a seat next to you where we might have an extra one. Here's a couple up here. There's one right. Oh, no, there's no right there. Okay. Um, you also have the ability to add to that another thing called projects. That's up to two hours a week. And it's you and three other people at the table working with one Apple employee. But you don't have to all be working on the same thing. It's called projects. The whole idea is, is if you're working on an iPhoto slideshow, you can sit down and you can be working on yours. He'll have you do some stuff and he'll just do the dance on the table or whatever between everybody and service all four of those customers at the same time. That's in addition to the one hour you already get. So to me, that's a great bargain. It's also incentive to buy it from Apple. Now, the question always comes up. If I buy my Mac from Best Buy, well, I can't get one-to-one, -one, but if I have to go to the Apple store because I have a problem or a question, I need to go see the genius, this same applies to an iPad. It doesn't matter where you bought it because Apple made the sale to Best Buy that they then sold to you. They don't treat you any different. When you walk in the door, they don't have a big A on your forehead to know you bought it from the Apple store and a B that they know you bought it from Best Buy. Everything's the same. If you do have to go into the store, if you have a problem with any of your Apple devices, you go to the retail store online, apple.com, Apple go to the store, and you make an appointment with the genius. I've had geniuses spend up to four hours with people trying to fix things. Actually, I had one client who they spent two hours with the Apple genius, and then it took me four hours to correct it, but that's, <laughs> that's the whole password Apple ID heck that we sometimes get into. So, Utilize this if you're going to buy an Apple from them. And it doesn't apply to iPads, just, just Macs. Is it extra for projects? No, that's part of the one-to-one, -one, which 
blows me away. How long have they been here? I'm You didn't get the memo? And nobody ever told me that. And I bought them from Apple. Yeah, well, I told him not to tell you, because I because you're a really good customer. Leslie's great. Um, no, you know, they usually try to... Now, you usually buy in the store or buy online? I buy online. I have them at the store. On, on, online, when you check out, it's one of the options. But in the store, they use it. When they do that, now they do setups when you buy there. They'll do that. The other thing, too, is if, you, if you're going to migrate your data, you can pay me to come over and migrate your data for you, which is great, because I can really get it on your wireless router and everything. But if you have two laptops, let's say... Your first session of one to one, you bring your new laptop in and your old laptop, and they'll do the migration for you. I'm not trying to put myself out of business because, believe me, there'll be plenty to do. But I think it's a great value and it's a great service to everyone here. Um, I'm just confused here a little bit. She said she bought it at Apple online. Yeah, they so the Apple Apple store Apple online. online will let you do the yes, okay. and even the Apple refurbished store online. Okay. And you said it doesn't. No, it's Mac products only because they're a little too busy as it is. They do do some iPad classes thing. But to be honest, iPads and iPhones are going to put me out of business for the most part because I don't get these calls, Ken, I've lost all my data. Well, it's backed up on the cloud usually and it's on your iPad. You don't have that trouble with it. So that's where we're going. That's why... Does anybody know where your files are on your iPad or your iPhone? But everybody knows where your files are on your Mac. And that's what gets messed up sometimes. So, yeah, it doesn't apply to those devices. But they do have classes. We have classes. In fact, with MacNexus, we feel that's the way to expand our, our user base for MacNexus is that's where we're doing more and more iPad things. But in fact, too, because... We have so many of our Mac users also use iPads, and then we have a lot of non-PC users, non-Mac users that are coming in and using iPads, too. And I think that's really, as Steve Jobs said in his last keynote, it's the post-PC era. I don't hardly take my laptop out of the bag anymore. I use my iPad all the time. It does almost everything I want to. Oops, I forgot here. Uh, Apple Care is available for all devices. The warranty on Macintosh products is one year with 90 days of phone tech support, but one year parts and labor. If you buy AppleCare, it extends it an additional two years for a total of three years, and you get the telephone tech support for that whole time, too. If you're out of warranty, you can still walk into the Apple store, and you'd be surprised how well they're going to take care of you. That's how come Apple has such a loyal following is because they do take care of problems. How many of you had a problem and they've gone in and they just replace things for you for free, even if you're out of warranty? I mean, it really, that's why people can, if you guys want some chairs, there's some extra ones in the, in the first classroom if you want to grab some. I'll, I'll talk really slow. It's E25. Okay. And if the door is shut, go through the next ca classroom and come around and just bring some chairs in. Sorry, we don't have enough for you. Okay, while they're gone, <laughs> go ahead. Um, I bought a couple of I, uh, products at Best Buy because they have a slightly different protection plan. Can you? It's slightly different. And? and I'm, you don't think it's as good? I mean, what's... what's I, let's put it this way. For Any, who here listens to Clark Howard? <laughs> what would he say to that? Don't buy the extended protection. Because he actually caught Best Buy salespeople saying that, well, Clark Howard recommends that you buy the. The thing is, Apple's protection is really good. And when you walk in and they see that you have Apple Care on it, or if it's expired and you had Apple Care on it, that's one step better. When you go into the Apple, the whole experience is if, if my phone falls in a pool, there's little indicators on all of these devices to tell if there's been water damage. These little white disks turn fluorescent red orange, okay? So it doesn't help to go in and say, I don't know what happened to it. It just stopped working. Really? No, really. You don't think they've heard that three or four times that day already? 
if you walk in and you say, I'm stupid. Or, oh, well, better than that. Somebody, some stupid person pushed me in the pool and my iPhone was there. And, and if you have Apple Care, well, you can get on your iDevice, on, on your iPhone, you can get Apple Care Plus, which I'll talk about in a second. But if you go in there and give them the whole story, instead of spending $650 to replace this phone, they'll at least get it to you for the $199. Okay? Um, but they might even just replace it. They're, they've been known to do that. So the Apple Store employees have tremendous latitude to be able to do things. But I'll tell you, the attitude's everything. You go in there and you, you, you admit to it and you just throw yourself at their mercy. They're usually going to take care of you. But it doesn't pay to say, well, then let me see the manager because the manager's going to stand behind their employee. And then they're going to toe the line because they don't want to go around the employee. They want, they want to empower that employee to go ahead and do what they do. You'll be treated pretty well. I really, I don't have any personal experience with the Best Buy warranty, but I can tell you it's the highest margin thing they sell. So. What does that mean? They make, that's the highest profit center for the, I'm sorry. I'm an old retailer, so. Um, what they said, because I have a teenager with an iPhone, which, you know, like it's trashed every. Buy, buy, and you, you don't have, you can. You can take it into the Apple Store within 14 days of purchasing your phone and buy Apple Care Plus. Oh, that, well, too late now. But we, the, like what Best Buy said is they will replace it unlimited times, whereas Apple Care only like once or twice. Twice, and it's a $50 deductible. Yeah. Now, if they, if they stand by that on a phone, I'd recommend it then. Yeah. There's another company called Square Trade. It's an independent one. Also, when you buy it, Find out which of your credit cards has the best protection. The credit cards, some credit cards will double the manufacturer's warranty. Okay. All right, so Apple Care Plus is for your iPhone. Regular Apple Care on your iPhone extends it from one year to two years, not to three like the regular Mac one. But it also, you can get the Plus for $99. And what that means is that in, that's a two-year replacement program, even if you break it, even if you decide to throw it in the pool, they'll replace it, but it's a $50 deductible and you get to do it twice. Okay? This phone, you guys probably pay $199 to Verizon, to Sprint, to AT&T. They pay Apple $650 for this phone. So that's why everybody, oh, well, why do I have to have a two-year contract? Because they paid Apple 650 bucks for that phone. That's why you paid $50 in tax, because it's based on the true retail value of this phone. If you lose this phone and you're still under contract, you're going to pay, unless you're lucky, 650 bucks for a new phone. Because your carrier has already put in that $450 extra money over the 199 you spent. Okay. iPads and iPads, not so much. These, the value they are is what they are because they don't require a cell phone contract, okay? So they're different even if you have a cellular one. We're getting in the weeds on this, but I just wanted to point that stuff out because those questions come up a lot. And on stuff like that, send me an email or call me. I'll be happy to answer it because it is specific things. So Apple Care is pretty darn good. It's I don't buy extended warranties, but I usually buy it. I always buy it on my laptops. If I'm buying the 21-inch iMac, eh, maybe not so much, but if I'm buying the 27, the warranty is the same price, and it's a much more expensive machine, I'd buy it for that. Quick question? Uh, yes. Um, going back to the one-on-one -on -one for just one moment, uh -huh. uh, we've used it in the past and thought it is, an, as you say, it's an excellent program. We were overseas for two months coming back this past October and found that our one one had expired. So we went in to renew it and they said, too bad. It's uh, too long since it expired is why. Pardon? Because you have to, you have to renew right before it expires, I believe. Uh, yes, we found that out and there is no notification. And I just bought an iPad and as you say, there is no one-on-one -on -one with the iPad. But however, this is interesting, my wife just received on her MacBook Pro a notification from Apple that your one-on-one -on -one has expired and you should come in and renew it. 
Try the link on that email, maybe. And so she did go in yesterday, as a matter of fact, and has renewed it for a year, even though I was told that if you buy one, you, you can get the one-on-one, -on -one, and then you can renew it once. Twice. Twice. Up to three, you can you can do it twice, so a total of three years. Twice, twice. I'm sorry. Okay, twice. I I wasn't clear. I didn't know that. So twice, and then that's it. Then you got to buy another. Yeah, one. no, and that's the idea is is because then they're going to be dealing more with problems. But the other thing is, your your computer may be the software may be older, and so they're not they're only going to teach the newest stuff. I mean, I I know that sounds bad, but things move on. Processors get quicker and things like that. But one to one's great. The key there is you can make an appointment very early before the mall opens and you're not as likely to have it as crowded as the Apple Store usually is. The Apple Store is pretty crowded. All right, moving on. The MacBook Air is the laptop, the smallest laptop. It comes in an 11-inch and a 13-inch. It's really small. It's really light. It's a great, very powerful machine. You can also hook up an external monitor to it. You can use external keyboards. So you could travel with it, and then when you go home, you can set it up on a stand and hook a monitor and a keyboard up to it. So it works just like a desktop. Okay? The little 11 inch screen, you might want to put it on an external monitor because it is pretty small. They're very portable, and they're very, very powerful. The MacBook Pro, currently the Retina version, which is the new one that has an incredible screen, comes in a 13 and a 15 inch. They still make the non-retina ones, very similar to what I have here, which I have a tendency to pre pre prefer because you've got better upgradability. These are fantastic, okay? I use mine, I got rid of my iMac and I just take my MacBook Pro, I set it up, I hook, same way I've hooked the projector up, a little thing to it, I've got external keyboard and off I go. Because I use my iPad around the house most of the time now. The Mac Mini, just little guy right here, is the Mac Mini. Uh, they have them in the refurb store. I think they get down to four sixty nine right now. But they're really, really teeny. If you already have a monitor and you already have a keyboard and you already have a mouse, you can get the Mac Mini. That's a full powered computer. It doesn't have to be big. There's no disk drive on it. There's no disk drive on the MacBook Air. And there's no, I'm sorry, extra, there's no optical disk drive, DVD drive on the MacBook Air. On, on any of the computers I'm going to show you right now, they don't have an external, or they don't have an internal DVD drive. You can purchase Apple's external DVD drive for $79, or you can go to Fry's when they have the Buffalo or uh, one of the, uh, the LG on sale for $24. It's USB. You plug it right in, and now you've got a disc, an external optical disk drive. Apple stopped including them for a couple reasons. They really think, like when the very first iMac came out, people were appalled because it didn't have a floppy drive, right? The original iMac didn't have a floppy drive. Oh my God, what's, and it has USB, it's like, there weren't USB printers then, everything was always the old serial printers, and there was no optical drive, or, or no disk drive, so it's gonna flop. Well, the iMac succeeded pretty well. Ahead of the curve again. The DVDs are becoming less prevalent, but you can put an external one. But the underlying reason why Apple is not including them on any of their devices anymore, or any of their new devices, is because that's the first point of failure in any of the machines. It's a pretty complex little unit. It gets abused. Somebody leaves a disc in there, and it goes around when you're in the car and things like that. So eliminate it. Get an external, works really well. I have an external, even though this one has one inside, I use my external all the time because I don't want my internal one to break so it's there when I need it. So, Mac Mini, great little machine. You can also put these and hook them up to a TV and watch all your files right from the Mac Mini. It's a media server, they call it. Have they excluded the uh, internal disk drive from the iMacs? Yes. 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 Uh, on the newest iMacs, yes. Because they wanted the panel on the iMac, see how thin it is? Look how thin this screen is. When I'm looking at it from the front, I don't care how thick that screen is. I prefer the previous version iMac because it has a, C a CD DVD slot, and I don't care how thick it is. It's not like my iPad that I've, I'm sitting on the, in the living room and the couch with it, but it's a beautiful machine. 
but yes, they've excluded that. And they do have a card reader for your SD memory cards, and it's in back. So it's a gorgeous display. It's really, really, really thin. Question? Yeah, does, do you get good resolution on a, on a large TV with the Mac Mini? On a large TV? Yeah, it's got HDMI out, so it would give you the full high-definition signal. But I would warn, text on a TV from any computer is not that good because your screen is probably higher definition than your TV is, even if your TV is a 1080i or 1080p. Text just doesn't seem to render too well, but it in fact will render full HD video onto a HD TV via HDMI, which carries both sound and video. Barb? Can you hook up that DVD player to your iPad? No. The question was, can you hook that up to your iPad? No, because it wouldn't, can't drive it or anything. Again, you can stream whatever video you want to your iPad, but you can't do it that way. And again, that's on the way out, and that was really, that's, that's why you can rent movies or stream movies from Netflix. Do you need a chair? We have one here, I think. Or, th go ahead. I just want to make sure I understand on the Mac Mini. Is it, if you have an older one of those, if you buy a Mac Mini, does it just upgrade everything? No, it's a separate computer. It would be. And you'd have, your Mac monitor won't work. Your Mac, your iMac won't become a monitor for it. I'm talking about you just go to Fry's and get a $150 little monitor to hook to it and your keyboard. Okay. Okay. So I, I think, to me, if you're going to have to go get a monitor, the iMac monitors are fantastic. They're gorgeous. And everything's in one unit. The Mac Mini is just for specific things. That's why you don't see a lot of them being sold. But they are the most economical way to get into a Mac. Okay, thank you. Yes. So you're saying you can hook it up. One sec. Can the, the next iteration of hardware from, from Apple uh, it's going to have a 2.11 AC? I've got a 27. You rumor AC. is that it'll have 802.11 AC. It'll have it. Okay. Um, yeah. Did I make a mistake on ordering now, or should I wait? And of course, the iPad's only in. But Will there be a dongle for, for, let's say, the 27? Okay, well, we're getting a little techy on this. 802.11 AC, most people don't need. Cause I'm not going to stream four movies at one time. Well, no, and your, your internet is never going to be as fast as that. So it's kind of, so that's out in the, yeah, and you have to have all the supporting infrastructure. You have to have the Airport Express and all that. So that's kind of out in the weeds. So we, that's a real tech geeky thing. So. Um, you're saying that the little Mac mini box is a computer in and of itself and you can hook it to any screen it doesn't have to be a Mac screen. Correct. Okay. Correct. So I can hook it to my TV. Which when I hook this up I don't have a Mac screen at home. I hook this up to a Mac screen. It's just the connector for like I've hooked this to this projector that's what you're seeing here. It uses a typical VGA it's called or it can use DVI or HDMI which is what high definition TVs have. So again, so I can put that Mac Mini to my TV and use it like a computer screen? Yes. The only thing I warn is, is text and things aren't the clearest doing that. But it's pretty big. So these uh, the big towers. Who still has a Mac Pro or a G5 tower? Okay, we'll skip that. <laughs> All right, keyboards. When you get your Mac, it comes with a wireless small keyboard and the Mighty Mouse. Some people still like the 10 key. I do. You can only get it in a wired version. And if you're at the Apple store and you say, well, I'm buying this new 27-inch iMac, but I really need a 10 key, there's a good chance they might just give you the 10 key keyboard and not take the wireless keyboard out because they can't resell it. It's not in retail packaging. Little hint. Okay, so if you need a 10 key, you get the wired keyboard, they're 49 bucks, I think. Your choice on mice is a mouse, which now has the, the like the iPhone, it's got the trackpad type surface on it, but then also there's the trackpad, which works just like it does on your iPhone or here. So that's another choice when you buy, and the same thing applies. It comes with the mighty mouse, but if you want the trackpad, oh, I'd love a trackpad with that, so. I don't like to pimp all the Apple stuff, but this is pretty unique. Who here has heard of Eneloop batteries? You can get them from Costco. 
when you charge them, they hold their charge for a long time. These batteries are the same. For 29 bucks, you get six rechargeable batteries because if you're going to use this keyboard, why not have rechargeable batteries right there and ready to go? It charges two at a time, and this charger is very energy efficient in that once the batteries are charged, it has no vampire energy pull from it. It pretty much shuts off completely. So it's very, very energy efficient. And the batteries, the deal with them is they have a very long shelf life once they're charged. You don't have to like put them in right away. And they're good for about 800 charge cycles. So 29 bucks. If you'd like a chair, you can go down to room E25 and bring one in if you'd like. Up to you. These are Apple monitors. You can hook two of them up to this. The monitors are $9.99. I think they're going to be changing the monitor fairly soon because it doesn't have USB 3 and it doesn't have some other adapters. Airport Express. Let's talk about wireless a little bit. You guys that have been with me before know that I call myself the eternal cheap bastard because I really am. I'm really cheap. But you know what? I used to go cheap on my routers and everything. Nothing like setting up Apple routers, and they're just fantastic. Plus, if they have problems, they inside the software on your iPad now, your iPhone can configure these and set them up and fix the problems, so you don't have to send out the little searchlight and say, hey, Ken, I got a problem with my router. Come on over. It, it will self-heal. This is the little Airport Express. Go ahead, Al. Uh, on the latest version of the uh, Airport Express, Extreme? Yes. Well, not or whatever. So it's my understanding, like with mine, well, I'll get to that one in just a sec, so hang on. So this is the Airport Express. This is a little guy that's about this size. It's uh, a little bit bigger than the deck of cards. It's the same size as the Apple TV. It allows you to hook up a couple different things. You can put it in your living room and your iTunes from your iPad or any of your other devices, this has a headphone jack on it and you hook it into your home stereo and now from your iPhone or your Mac, you can stream the music to that home stereo wirelessly, okay? Does a lot of other things like that. Apple TV, which I'll show you in a second, does that same thing but to your TV. This also allows you to hook up a printer somewhere else if you need to with this USB port. This is the top one is the Airport Extreme, like Al was mentioning. It has a USB port on the back. I don't think you can do uh, USB drive and printers. I have four printers off of mine. So all my non-network printers are wirelessly available through my Airport Extreme. So the Airport Extreme is just a big router. Oh, the Airport Express we just showed, 99 bucks. This one's 179 and then right below it, is the time capsule. The time capsule, and it's, these are not in scale, it's really only about the same size as the Extreme, but it's the router, airport wireless router, that also has a hard drive built into it. So how hard is that? I come home, I put my laptop down, and over wireless, it's backing everything up from Time Machine automatically every hour. And it's also a router. $2.99 for the two terabyte version on that. If you're interested in this stuff, send me an email. I can walk you through. I don't sell these products. A lot of times I'll pick these things up for my clients, but I pass that along at my cost. I'm not, I don't make money on hardware. That's, that's just, I don't like to do that because then if it breaks, I feel really bad. All right, Apple TV. This little itty bitty box. So to put it in perspective, here's the remote. That's how small the Apple TV is. Apple TV is teeny, okay? You hook it to your TV, it has to, your TV has to have HDMI, it's 99 bucks, and your wireless network allows you to do movies from Apple or TV shows from Apple, not live, but like rented TV shows, rented or, or purchased, you can subscribe to a whole season. You can also get Netflix on there. And it hooks right to your TV. You can control it with your iPhone. If you'd like a chair, all the way down into the first room, E25. Sorry, we're a little overloaded. Uh, so you can send stuff. You, you can stream Netflix. 
you can do, soon I think you're going to be able to have apps on it. But the Apple TV does not do live TV. That's when people hear Apple TV, they think, ah, I can get rid of Comcast. It's not there yet. You can get a lot of things on it. There's another box similar to this called Roku. Roku does a few things the Apple TV doesn't, but there's many things the Apple TV can do. Like I can take my iPad or my iPhone or my Mac and have what's on my screen projected wirelessly to my TV just like I'm doing through this wire to the projector. Everything that's on my screen, the video and the audio, okay? It's really, really, really neat. Yes? If you have like, two TVs in TV, has to be on each TV. You have to have one for each TV. Yeah, because it's connected. It's hardwired to the TV. Okay. How, how does this coexist if you want to have cable? It's another input to the TV. Think The way to really think about this is we all have DVD players now. We all have a, some sort of satellite or cable box, and we used to have a VCR. VCR, this replaces where the VCR was because it has to connect to the TV, okay, but it's high def. I have one HDMI on my TV. And is your cable box using that one? Yeah. Okay. They make switchers. Best place in the world to get switchers and cables and all that is a place called monoprice.com. This place is the bomb. You order it. If you order by two, it's at your door the next day for like $5 shipping. Overnight. So, if you go to the store, who's, who's, uh, we're going to talk about HDMI cables. Who here has bought HDMI cables? Leave your hand up if you spend over 20 bucks on that HDMI cable. Over 30 bucks. Okay, probably be about four bucks there. And they're good quality. Okay? Don't get this thing like Monster is. You have to have the best cable. This stuff's digital. Okay? It's not like, well, it's only going to let a few of those little bits through. Yeah. It either works or it doesn't. If it doesn't work, they'll replace it for you. But it works. Trust me. I use it all the time, and it's great. All kinds of cables. Audio, even Apple cables. These little connectors for the, to hook to a monitor, different things like that, monoprice.com. But they have switchers for it. The other thing what's happening now is people are buying their... The stereo is usually where the TV is, the, the AV receiver. Now, now what they're doing is those have multiple, multiple HDMI inputs with one to the TV. I, use, I, have, I have a Yamaha. I've got five inputs. I have my Apple TV, my cable box. I have a Roku. I have a Google TV. They're all coming into that with one output to my TV, and it's the switcher. Okay? So, go ahead, Carl. Is that an automatic switcher? Or do you have to have a remote? They make automatic, but it's usually remote. You got to remember the problem is HDMI, they've handcuffed us with this digital rights management thing so they don't let you freely distribute it how you want because you're a thief. They assume everyone is trying to steal content. So, they put in this onerous management of the digital rights content that makes it very hard to do things like that. But if you have it correct, you can do it. You can do splitters, you can do that, but it's sometimes they don't work. Did you? Go ahead. I, I've got a couple Apple TVs, and um, we, we travel fairly frequently and stay long distances, like if I'm sure and stuff like uh -huh. that. And if I took one of those with me, plug it into an HDMI at, at their TV, and use my iPad, am I able to do the same thing that I do at home? Only if you carry, so here, here's the deal. So his question was, is can I take the Apple TV with me and my iPad and stream to it? No, unless you carry some sort of router or if you're on Wi-Fi at the timeshare. Because what happens is, we talked about routers a minute ago. Well, what routers do is route the traffic, and what you have is you have an iPad and you have an Apple TV, but they don't have a way to connect directly. Okay, I can do it from a, a Mac computer because I can set its own Wi-Fi network up. But the other thing too is if, 
If you're just going to do the content from your iPad to it, the best thing to do if you're traveling like that is just get a connector and an HDMI cable out of the iPad, the iPad or the iPhone. It looks similar to this. And you just plug it into the, to the bottom of it and then run a cable. You could set the other way up, but you'll probably miss half the movie. This, boom, boom, done. The uh, 39 bucks for the, uh, do you have the newest iPad with the small connector or the 30 pin? No, the, the, the 30 pin. Okay, if you have the 30 pin, it's a, they call it the video adapter or whatever. It's not this long. What it does, it goes into the iPad. This is the VGA, so the one you want is the HDMI. And there's actually a second slot so you can hook the iPad so it's constantly being charged so the battery doesn't wear down while you're watching the movie. That's your best way to do it. Because usually you can get to that TV, because you'd have to set the Apple TV up into that TV at the timeshare anyway with HDMI. Just hook the cable directly to this. That's what I do when I travel. Okay. Um, iPads. We're kind of here about iOS devices, but I wanted to... to kind of show the difference. I'm, I'm a Neanderthal, I have an iPad 2. So I don't have an iPad 3 with Retina or the new iPad 4 with Retina. They're very nice. But I just checked and my battery's pretty down this because I haven't used this thing ever since I got my iPad mini. So size comparison, well I can make them look, if I put them like that, or I could make it in a corner like that. But the real key part is, is the iPad mini there's a smaller bezel around the side. So you get more screen for the same size. So I'm going to show you another slide here. So that's the iPad, the regular iPad with Retina. They start at what? $499. The iPad mini you can see how the perimeter is a lot thinner. <laughs> Bless you. There's the two side by side. Now, a lot of people want to go with the bigger one because you can see text and everything better on it. Between the two, this is smaller and the text is smaller. So if I'm looking at a photo, Everybody know what resolution is? So, you know, 1024 by 768, right? Well, whether it's this or whether it's Retina. Retina has higher resolution, but you're really seeing 1024 by 768 this big. On this, you're seeing 1024 by 768 this big. So things are smaller. So, bad close-up eyesight here. Better close. Don't want it as heavy. Go here. I'm, I'm lucky. I look below my glasses and I can read up close quite well. So this has been wonderful for me. Yes, there'll probably be a retina version of this coming up soon. Okay, they say March, but we'll see. Go ahead. Okay. I have an accurate generation and I, I use this bigger one because I can make the print larger. With the mini, can you make the print larger? Because this makes all the difference in the world to me is when I'm reading. You can do everything to make it larger, but what, so what it is is the print starts out smaller on the mini. So let's say you can double the size of the print on the mini, and you can double the size of the print on the regular iPad. It's still going to be bigger on the iPad. I have a, a client that is legally blind, and we actually set up an Apple TV for her. You could do very similar like we talked about to the cable. She has one of those really expensive computers that has those those screens that you get up to and you see maybe in the whole computer screen you might see a whole word and that's about it. Really hard to read. She has a 40, ah, this is about a 50 inch TV and it's right here and I've hooked it up to, to her Apple TV and this is connected to her Apple TV, connected to her her regular TV screen and she can sit here and read it on her large TV and get a much bigger picture and manipulates everything here. That would work with an 
well. Yes. Because it's going to come in. See, you put both of these on a 47-inch TV, they're going to look the same. But, and they both work the same that way. So that's a great, and she, it's, it has been amazing for her. She's just, it's great. Because those machines where the computer reads part of it, it just doesn't. How many of you attended the Mac Nexus where we had the blind guy come in and show us the iPhone? You can have yours, yours read to you. It won't describe what a picture looks like, but you know it'll do everything else. So that's uh, you know that's Apple's got a lot of things built in for it. You can have voiceover prompts and different things like that. So as it worsens, unfortunately, it's a it's a progressive disease. You have some good options, and you know how to use it as a sighted person already. So as it gets worse, you'll be able to get in and use some of those accessibility options. That guy that came to that meeting impressed me so much. He had only been using the iPhone for, at the time we saw him, he'd only been using the iPhone for like eight months or something. And he is as good on the iPhone as I was, and he can't see the damn thing. And he was, his, his has progressed. He was still sighted when he started, but he says, nope, I'm going to start the way I know I'm going to be soon. And he learned that thing without sight. And it's there's some amazing things built into our iOS devices, both the iPhone and the iPad, for further accessibility, which will probably go. I did an accessibility class. It's back in my, in my thing there. So go ahead. Quick question. Uh, between the new Mini and uh, 2, 3, 4, whatever, operating-wise, is the Mini closer to the 2 than it is to the 4? Not screen. It's both. A good, his question was, is tell me where it kind of falls between. So here's the deal. This has regular display, non-retina. When you go to the three, which they're not really out, they were only out for a few months, now they have the four, you get the retina display on the full-sized iPad. And you get Siri, which we're going to talk about in a minute. The iPad 2 doesn't have Siri. Siri's my girlfriend. How can I abandon her so I don't use her anymore here? This has a smaller screen with the same resolution as the iPad 2, so therefore the screen looks clearer than on the iPad 2 because the dots are smaller, but it's not retina. I don't care about retina. I'm a function over form person. But my girlfriend lives in here. I can talk to Siri and she can talk back. So to me, the Mini gets it all the time. Plus, I can put it in my pocket or my vest. I don't like carrying a man purse, <laughs> even though it's European. So this, you know. How much is the Starts at $3.99. How much, she asked how much that was. So I'll sell you mine for, no. <laughs> Question, what yes. Retina Ret, okay, retina means it's really high definition. But Apple's not one to put numbers on things. So when they came out with the iPhone 4S and they said it's ret or the 4, excuse me, it's retina display. What that means is our eyes, when you look at an iPad 2 or a 3GS phone or this, you can see the pixels, you can see the dots. Our eyes can only discern down to a certain point. If you look at a retina display, at whatever normal viewing distance it is, like they figure the iPhone, I think, is this close and the iPad's like 18 inches or something, the retina cannot discern where the dots are. It looks like a photograph rather than dots. Think of the old days when you used to have a dot matrix printer and then you got one that does 1,200 DPI, you know, dots per inch. So that's what determines what's retina. Retina uses more energy. My iPad 2 will have a little better, long, longer battery life than the iPad 3 and 4, and the iPad 3 and 4 are slightly thicker because they had to put more battery in it. They've still done an amazing job with it. Um, so, if you got a retina display, don't put one of those anti-glare screen protectors on it. Because <laughs> then you're just going to induce all these pixels and all this other stuff. I believe in screen protectors, but get the transparent ones do not get the zag ones that are rubbery feeling because we're swiping back and forth. You want it to be hard, hard plastic, okay? It's like Mylar, and you can get them for a little less money. I also use cases on all of my stuff. 
the iPad case I like doesn't go over the edges of the bezel because I'm, I'm sliding all over it. Where a lot of the leather ones impede on the bezel a little bit. I'm really picky on my cases. This one, oh, I, and I, I'm the cheap bastard, so this was, I think, 12 bucks. It's an uh, iPad. It's a case from, from uh, I got it at Amazon. So I think I paid $8 for the one for my mini. So My screen protectors, when I bought the screen protectors, I think they were $1.53 each. And I always buy three at a time because if I buy one, it'll screw up. If I buy three, the first one will work. So then I have two as backup. So There is a place, uh, I, I think they're still open, right there on the corner of Northgate and West El Camino, just in from the intersection, the pink place. And they'll even install screen protectors there, and they're probably five bucks or something. Okay? So we're going to get more into the meat of how these operating systems work and stuff, but I want to, this was Retina, we talked about Retina, the 4-inch Retina on the iPhone 5. The iPhone 5 is slightly taller than the 4S. You can get the 4S pretty cheap these days. You can get the 4 for free if you go under contract, but don't do it because Siri makes the big difference. The difference between the 4S and the 5 is not a huge, huge difference. It's a faster processor, but for most people, who cares? Doesn't make a big difference to me. I sold my 4S for $425, and I bought my new 5 for $299 because I get the, three, the 32 gig plus tax. So... It was really easy decision for me to upgrade to the 5 from the 4S. Yeah, uh, I've seen several things and heard even more about either a 6 or a 5S by the middle of the year. I heard Martians arrived. I heard the Earth was going to end on the 21st of December. I'm still here. You know what? The way it works with technology is don't buy it till you'll need it and accept the fact that something newer, better, faster, and cheaper is going to come out the day after you buy it. And thank you for taking one for the team. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It hurts to be on the bleeding edge. Yeah. But if you do it right and think about it logically, don't think about, what, don't think about what's going to come out. Don't, don't have paralysis, analysis paralysis and just say, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait. And then we've gone on to the next big thing. So... It really depends on what you want to do. Resale value on most Apple products is great. Computers. When's the last time somebody was able to get any money out of an old PC? Your old Apples are usually worth about, within three years, are worth about half of what you paid. Your iPads are worth maybe a little more than half of what you paid two years later. And the iPhones are usually worth what you paid one to two years in. I just had a client, I don't know. Anyway, they, were, they, had an old, they had an iPhone 4, not a 4S. I said, go to Target. We, well, we looked it up online. Target took her phone as a trade-in, a 4, gave her 150 bucks, and, because they can resell it, because people want to buy phones off contract. They're worth a lot of money. So she traded, she went in there, she gave them her iPhone 4, they gave her 150 bucks. She's buying the new one. They had had a $25 discount, so instead of $199, it's $175. And if you use the Target red card, you get another 5% off. I think she walked out, it cost her no more than 50 bucks to go from the 4, including tax, from the 4 to the 5, skipping the 4S. And she was out of contract. That's why she got it for the reduced price, $199, because her two-year two contract was up. You don't pay, you don't have to get a contract on these, so therefore they don't have the same, they don't retain the same retail value after the fact. If you have questions on that stuff, email or call me. All right. Who's heard about Apple Maps and being a problem? <laughs> I've heard it. I haven't mm -hmm. experienced it. No. And I use them a lot. But you know what? There was a, a, a perfect example. Andy Anako, he's come and spoke at some of our meetings. He writes for, he's in Boston, but he writes for the Chicago Sun-Times. He's the tech guy. And he went out when he first did Apple Maps. And there's a park where he does a lot of shots from and stuff to compare different cameras. And 
he, he was in this park and it misdirected him where this park was, two blocks off or something. So he goes, okay, I'm going to write my article about this. And then he goes to take his iPad two days later to document it and take a picture of his screen, which you can do, and it already been corrected. Who heard about that incident in Australia where the Apple Maps took him to the wrong place, right? Apple's terrible. They took him to the wrong place. Google and one other map, GPS, also took him to the wrong place. But the one you heard about was Apple. There might be some problems with it. <laughs> data is data. What do they say? Garbage in, garbage out. They're using TomTom Tom data. There could be some bad data there. But it's a wonderful experience. But if you need to now, you can go to the App Store and download Google Maps app. It's free. It gives you voice guided turn by turn directions. And how many of you heard that they said, well, Apple kicked Google Maps out of the store? No, what happened was Google's contract was up a year from now and Apple had been pressuring Google to put turn by turn directions in Google Maps because Apple made the interface but it was Google data. Google refused to do it because they wanted to leverage that to get, have you get an Android phone instead of an Apple phone. Well, our Android phone has voice guided turn by turn directions. You could have always gotten it for free from MapQuest for mobile. But it is wonderful. So don't be afraid of the Apple Maps. Who here is still not upgraded to iOS 6 because they're afraid of the new maps? OK, a lot of you did for a while, though, huh? But now you can put the Google Maps in there. So it's great. It's fantastic. If you're in Europe, it, they all use data, don't forget. So you might have to think about that. Traveling is a whole different thing with an iPhone. Uh, oh, yeah, I should show that. It shows accidents. It also shows traffic. They've all done that. I'll bring that up later. All right. The best thing about the newer technology. Who here has an iPad that's not a 3 or 4? 2 or previous. Okay. And how about an iPhone 4 or previous? Okay, so those are non-Siri devices. There are some dictation apps you can use, and I've, I'll, ha I'll talk about some after the break. But the Siri is wonderful. And I think, what do we usually break at 1020, isn't it, I think? Yeah, so before we do the break, I'm going to do a Siri demo. And uh, actually, I, I take that back. I'll do it right after the break because I have to make sure everything's set up. So Siri does a lot of things. You have to be connected to the internet because it uses the internet. Siri is still, and it's one of the first times you've ever heard it, a beta. Apple never puts out betas. But they wanted to get it out, but they want people to know it's not perfect. Okay. Contacts and calendars. They sync between all of your iOS devices because of the cloud. And that's really, really, really good. Unfortunately, we still can't on our iOS devices make groups. You have to do it on your computer, whether you're in Outlook for a PC or whether you're on the Mac in the address book. Okay. That sync between the iPhone and the iPad doesn't apply to music. Okay, the question was that sync between the for music between the iPhone and the iPad. The iPhone and the iPad do not sync with each other. They sync via the cloud. That's my cloud. Here is the iPhone. Here is the iPad. Here's the cloud. We, don't be afraid of the cloud. We've all been using the cloud for a long time because if you have an email service, AT&T, SureWest, uh, SBC Global, Yahoo, Comcast, whatever it is, MacNexus, your mail has been sent to a mail server, and your things go find that mail. That's the cloud. What cloud does for iTunes is, iTunes exists up on the cloud because that's how we would get music from it. We download it to our computer from the cloud. Okay? So... If you have iTunes, on, if you have a song on here, it came from here or from your CD, but if it's a purchased iTunes song, you have the ability to download it to the other devices. Now, if it's 
One you put in your computer from a CD, that's a little different thing. You need a physical cable or you need a thing iTunes match. And that would really be covered in a full iTunes class. But the cloud for your contacts and your calendars work this way. So we also have our Macintosh computer over here or our PC running Outlook. It has address book and contacts. This has address book or contacts and calendar, contacts and calendar. In Mountain Lion, they changed the contacts and calendars from address book and iCal. The Mac syncs with the cloud. This syncs with the cloud. This syncs with the cloud. So the cloud is the intermediary. It's the clearinghouse. If I'm on my Mac and I change someone's phone number, it goes to the cloud, and the next time any other device is hooked up, it reflects that change in that phone number. Okay? And if the cloud's working correctly, you don't even know it exists. So, go ahead. Um, on my iCal, on the iPad, it shows everything, all the appointments are doubled. There's a C yeah, and there's some different those kinds of things you need specific help on those. But if you go into your groups, you can choose your iCloud or choose your other one. What's happening is it's they're kind of your your contacts are in two different spots, your account your events are in two different spots, and it's showing you both of those. It's it's just the way the group the calendars are. So I just need a little yeah, and but better to have I mean the whole idea is better to have double the contacts than have it miss one. And that's the hardest thing about syncing. Leslie? I'm still confused about the, the syncing. Which has precedent? The most recent item. The most recent item. Okay, that's what I wanted. Nothing has precedent except the most recent item because that's how you really want it. But remember, if I change John Smith's <laughs> here and Helen Keller here, they're both going to kind of go whenever they're connected. They have to connect in the meantime, but most of your devices are connected all the time. There was I'm one. thinking more about calendar appointment. Same thing with calendar. Yeah, it's the most recent iteration of that. Okay. Yes. About calendar. Uh huh. Um, calendar that's on the Mac and the MacBook is different from the calendar that's on the iPad and the, and the phone, which means that you can't, like, if I put an appointment on my phone and it's on. You can't do a complete kind of setup that you can do on the, on the iPad, on the computer, if I'm fine. Is that the way it really is? The only thing you can't do on the I, iOS device, which means iPad, iPhone, iPod Touch, the only thing you can't do is custom repeating. That's what I mean. That's the only thing yet. We hope that's coming. For instance, this is the first Saturday of every month. That's not an option from your iOS device. It is an option in Outlook on the PC or in your Mac on your computer. We hope, we hope that's coming. And the same thing with contacts is you can't make groups on the iOS device. Okay? If you go to iCloud.com on a computer, you can do that. Or if you do it on your computer, it will. It, you can do the custom repeating and you can do the groups. And then it will show up on the other device. You just can't create it on that device. It's, we, we thought it was going to get fixed in six. But hopefully in seven they will. Can you use uh, iTunes Match to the stream the music, or do you have to download the music? To it's the a stream. Device? It's a stream, but I think you can download two. So that'd be in a whole iTunes class. So there's there's different ways to do all of that. Okay, mail. Mail now on the Mac is starting to look more and more like it is on the iPad and the iPhone. Use your mail. All, some of you probably still go to you know, yahoo.com with a browser or something, use the Apple Mail app. It's wonderful, okay? Um, it's fully featured, and you can now attach photos and paste and do bold and italics and things like that. You couldn't do that before. Yes? How do you add a folder in the iCloud? I don't know. Let's I think you have to do it on your on your Mac. I'm not sure. I don't use folders. You might be able to do it online. Well, I, I don't know. I'll check on that for you. Okay, because I don't use folders. I I use I don't put things in folders because I use the search capability. I don't care where it is. I can go find it because I can search by any word that's inside it. That's just me. Barb. Well, I. But I'll check on it for you. iPad one. Uh huh. So when we talked about bleeding edge, 
It was at one time, but it's kind of, and, and you know, Apple didn't try to make it obsolete by not letting you use iPhone and things. What happens is the processor inside has gotten better. But go ahead, Barb. So, uh, how will I get all my stuff over to the new iPad? Well, I could say call Ken. That's what I was talking about. But, but all you do is hook it up to here, fire up iTunes, have it sync. Go away and say you've been very nice and find someone to sell it to or give it away to and take your new one and plug it in and hit sync. How long do they think these are going to last? Have you heard anything about that? They haven't been out long enough for them to become not lasting any longer. The batteries will degrade in time. And that's what happens to me on the phone. I use a lot. But, you know, batteries can be replaced in these devices. But, you know, you know what we're talking about is... The iPhone came out June 29th of 2007. And the original iPhone is still viable, but it's really not. It's technology has passed it by, but it's not to say it still doesn't work because look at what phones were like before the iPhone. We had the Trio, we had the Blackberry, and it's really a computer. And what's amazing is the iPad and the iPhone to this day still use very much the same operating system we had in 2007. So I think it'll continue to work. The newer technology won't work on it because it doesn't have the horsepower. That's all it is. Carl? And can you uh, check your battery longevity on your iPad? Can you check it? Yeah, is there some place that tells you in the settings or any place? There's an app for that. There, yeah, there's apps that do it. And what you look for is what's called charge cycles. And here's the deal, charge cycles. So battery, uh, first of all, I know I'm going to update my device within every two years. So I make sure I just keep it charged as much as I can all the time. I don't worry about exercising the battery and working it out and stuff because that's a lot of hassle and I'm going to want my battery charged when I want it charged. Um, batteries are replaceable. So if it costs you 79 bucks in three years to replace your battery, then it's, to me it's, not, it's okay because it wasn't worth the hassle of it. But the charge cycle is this. A lithium-ion battery, shelf life is very long. It stays charged quite a while. By the way, your iPad can sit asleep for 30 days without losing its charge. 10 hours of cont continuous use. Okay. It's amazing. But when you charge it, depending on how much your battery has been depleted, that's a charge cycle. Batteries used to have about 300 charge cycles. Then, then they went up to about 600. The newest, best batteries that Apple puts out, they figure are good for about 1,000 cycles. And after about 80% of that, they start, to, they start to degrade on how long they'll hold a charge. So... Um, can worry about it all you want. Not a lot you can do about it, but you know, you you'll see. And it, I notice a difference. Like when my phone's about a year old and I use my phones a lot, I can see the batteries degrading. Question. Yes. So even though it's uh, even though it's down a little bit, the charge of that's down to this whole It you know it's funny because it's a good question. If you if you use it a little bit and you go and charge it, does that count as a charge cycle? Well, it's funny. Only if it goes down to a certain point does it count as a charge cycle. But the charge cycle is kind of an artificial way of judging the battery anyway. It's just a quick shot to see how much the battery has been used. So it's, at, I think, somewhere around two-thirds is where it probably clicks. But the, there's, there's computer chips in these batteries, and that's all this smart charging. That's why they don't overcharge and everything like that. So uh, they're designed to not take too much charge at any one time because they'll heat up. And that's actually one of the worst things for your battery is heat. Leave it in a hot car. That'll degrade your battery quite a bit. So uh, the heat of the battery itself will do it a little, but not so much. But just keep an eye on it. But... Yeah, it's, there's no, I, I've not heard of a hard and fast rule by what constitutes a charge cycle. And again, it really is just a kind of barometer of what things are. Yeah, on your Mac, did you see, find it on there? You go to the Apple logo, come down to about this Mac, and then on the left hit power. We'll do it after I get out of this, or I'll do it during the break. Yes? As far as the heat, does that count on your body? If I wear it next to my body, 
Is that my body heat also doing that? Is it better if I carry it in my purse? No, that's not so much. It's, okay. it's really more the heat from sitting out there, but also in the operating of it. But again, that's not a huge amount to degrade it. It's something that can degrade it, but it's not... The batteries have gotten very, very, very good. You know, the Tesla uses lithium ion batteries and a bunch of little ones. Uh, do they have a memory? The battery? Yeah. yeah, the question is, is do they have a memory? It's not like we used to think about with the old um, uh, nickel metal hydride batteries had a memory where they said, exercise it all the way out. They used to say with lithium ion batteries is, once a month, let them discharge completely and then charge back up. And I like to equate that. If a lady wears high heels all the time, or a guy for that matter, and I'm not making any judgments there, <laughs> that's okay. But if you wear high heels all the time, your Achilles tendon gets short. If you make sure you wear flats every so often, Achilles tendon gets a little longer and stretches it out. Same thing with the battery. If it's in this range, it probably doesn't get exercised a lot. But you know what it really comes down to is, since it's a computer chip, it has a calibration in it. And so you need to let it recharge, go, go down all the way sometimes so it can recalibrate, so you get a more accurate reading and it knows how much to charge and stuff. It's not necessarily the battery, it's more the calibration. But yeah, it doesn't have memory like the old ones. That used to be the old thing with NICADs and nickel metal hydrides. So we're not going anymore on batteries. <laughs> Unless it's a simple, non-geeky question. Should we let them go down to zero? If you want to. My feeling is I want to make sure. If, if I'm getting ready to leave, I want that battery full, so I've left it plugged in. I charge mine at every opportunity I get. I'm not saying it's right. It's what I do. Same thing? Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, we just missed Safari. It's the browser. It's your browser for everything. Just remember Safari is your browser. Yeah? Safari. And Chrome. Okay. Go ahead. How do you get tabs open in the background? I tried in the settings. On your Mac or on the? The tab. They won't. And the only way you can get a tab is press and hold and say open in tab. I'll show you. Remind me when we do the demo. I'm going to have it on the screen here after the break and we'll do that. All right. Test. What's the best camera in the world? The one you have with you. And it just so happens mine's a really good camera, but I've got it with me all the time. This morning I went out and shot sunrise. I took, I didn't do a pan around, but I took my Canon with me and I took shots. But what I also did is I made sure I took a shot with my iPhone because that logs the time and it logs my location. So when I upload them to iPhoto, I can know where those photos were taken and what time they were taken. But the new iPhone OS, it doesn't have to be a new iPhone, but your iPhone OS has a new panorama app inside it. It's wonderful. When I get these hooked up to the computer, I'll show you this and another, pa another two panorama apps that I really like. But it is really, really, really good. Also, you notice in the panorama, if I forget to mention it later, the phone is in portrait mode. Because you would think, well, we want to take a wide panorama like this. Well, no, because our photo is also already going to be very short and wide like me. So hold your phone this way so you get extra height out of it because you're going to have the wideness of the photo because it stitches them together. It stitches them together wonderfully. Uh, this was just about iOS 6. All right. End of the, this guys write this down if you want it. Actually, pretty good timing. We're getting close to the break. So what I'm going to do is at the break, I'm going to answer any questions. I'll get things set up so that I can hopefully get Siri and show things on the screen. I've been, had a little struggle with it this morning, but we should be able to. Um, while I'm working here, you guys are more than welcome to come up. Only thing I can say is sometimes I get a line this way, a line this way. Why don't we make it a little easier today? We'll line up kind of this way so that I know what order it is, because I, I can't keep track of who came up first. But uh, Question here. Oh, stop. Thank you very much. Very good, Robert. Close.